What's going on guys? Welcome to another project update. I can't believe we're already at episode 5 of this build series. But in any case, we have reached another huge milestone today because all the control surfaces on the U-boat are now functional as well as the drive line. And I've also made some uh, uh, additions to the front of the watertight cylinder. And I will show you guys that in just a second. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so starting off in the forward section of the WTC, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is the forward end cap of the cylinder that I designed and 2D printed. This has two main components, one of which is the uh, uh, ballast tank intake coupling that you see right here. And this is a little brass tube simply connects to this uh, silicone, silicone hose that connects to the rest of the pump and ballast system. On the other end of this intake, we have a little filter on the outside end of the end cap. And this is, a, this is especially important for a pump-based ballast system such as this one because this prevents any foreign objects from making its way into the tubing and risk clogging up the pump. So very important to have that in place there. Uh, the rest of it is basically this little micro servo that actuates the linkage push rod that you see right here. And just to have this uh, move for you guys, there you go. So I've done a little linear conversion that you see here uh, similar to um, the uh, rear control servos that I have going on on the other end of the WTC. Uh, traditionally, uh, something like this would be uh, used to actuate uh, the forward hydroplane on a uh, World War II submarine. But in, in my U-boat, I've decided to uh, actually keep the forward diving planes fixed in their horizontal position for now. Uh, simply because you know I, I don't really see a need to given the uh, shadow depth that I plan to uh, operate at. So for now, the plan is to simply have the rear diving planes uh, be actuated and the forward diving planes be fixed. Uh, what I really want to uh, use this little uh, linkage is to actuate the launch mechanism uh, for the torpedo that's going to be installed into uh, the U-boat at, at a later date. Um, haven't figured out the design yet, but you know, it's cool to just have uh, this in place uh, right now. Okay, so moving on to the stern section, uh, you can see that I've got my drive battery sitting on top of the bulkhead there, just to keep this from toppling over. But just to speak to you for a minute about the uh, stern control surfaces, uh, I've always loved how big and massive uh, this rudder is given given the uh, compactness of this little U-boat, but uh, in compared to something like a Type Seven or a Type Nine U-boat, which has a dual rudder setup at the stern, uh, the Type Two only has a single large rudder. And given the size of this piece, I, I think uh, my turning radius should be relatively uh, decent uh, given a boat of this size. And and of course because of this single rudder setup there is no stern uh, torpedo tube on these Type 2s. Uh, the way I've had this connected is pretty standard as far as uh, World War II RC submarines. Essentially, there is a uh, brass rod that's connected to the rudder going up vertically into the hull. And similarly for the uh, stern diving planes, there is a brass tube connecting the two diving planes together that are going through this uh, central support section. I don't have the propellers mounted yet, but we'll show you that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and if I rotate the camera, just to go in, it's a bit dark there, but you can see the uh, two brass linkages uh, that are going to be connected to the, uh, uh, the uh, corresponding uh, control rods on the WTC. But it's a bit hard to see. Um, the way they're hooked up to the uh, bell cranks is pretty uh, standard because on for the diving planes, for example, you can just make out the little ball joint uh, there that I have connected to the bell crank. Um, the rudder itself is much, much further back. Uh, not sure if you can see, you can just make out the gray 
uh, 3D printed piece there to the far left that's connected to the uh, set of linkages that, uh, that are uh, at, the, uh, at the top. So uh, in terms of control, it's relatively easy. You know, the, the servo uh, pulls these linkages back and forth and it makes these uh, control surfaces uh, turn. Uh, the way they're connected is via a magnetic coupling. Uh, the magnet for the hall side uh, are actually hidden uh, inside those styrene sleeves there. But on the WTC, if I can show you guys here, I have the corresponding uh, two um, push rods there that you can see right there. The magnets are just, I think they're, they're in focus now. They're just uh, visible right there. So once the WTC is uh, locked into the bayonet ring, uh, I then simply hook up the linkages and we should have uh, some functional uh, stern control surfaces. Okay, so I've got my transmitter turned on and the main power source connected to the WTC. So I can show you guys the linkages in action. So here we go, actuating the rudder, right? And moving the diving planes, all moving nice and smoothly. From the exterior, uh, we have the rudder moving left and right, and we have the diving planes going up and down. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the travel or the rotation angle uh, for the diving planes and the rudder don't need to be too large, uh, especially for the rudder since uh, if it rotates too much, it's going to hit uh, the edge of this uh, diving plane there. But in the case of the diving planes, I think I've got maybe a maximum 3 degrees on either side, uh, up and down. And the reason for that is uh, they're going to be sitting right behind the propeller's wash uh, right there. So with the amount of water current generated by the prop, uh, you really don't need uh, the, the too much travel uh, on the diving plane itself. Uh, and in the depth that I'm operating at, I think what I have is uh, plenty enough uh, to uh, make the submarine pitch up and down. Uh, one thing you might notice is that uh, I'm also missing the, uh, I guess, the propeller guard. It's like an L-shaped piece uh, connecting the, the edge of the diving plane uh, onto the prow shaft support right here. Uh, the reason I don't have it uh, connected yet uh, is because right now it's just so much easier to uh, uh, connect the propeller to the propeller shaft with, without anything getting in the way. But you know, towards the end of the build, I'll be sure to have that made uh, and uh, connect it up so that uh, the propeller can be kind of protected from uh, any knocks, right? In case this thing um, uh, knocks against the uh, edge of the pond there. So uh, speaking of propellers, we're going to show you uh, the work that I did on the driveline next. So when it comes to the driveline, the propeller shaft on each side of the boat is not only supported by uh, a bushing that's located on the prop shaft support that you see it right there fixed to the hull, but there's also some additional bushings on the inside of the hull. And you can see the one on the port side right there as a brass uh, bushing that's uh, connected to a uh, white styrene bulkhead there that's JB welded in place. And similarly, on the bottom there, we have the bushing uh, for the starboard side. So this ensures that the propeller shaft is supported on at least two points, right, to prevent any excessive uh, wobbling. So you don't want that happening when your uh, propeller shaft is rotating. Uh, in terms of the whole setup, I have it, I have it laid out right here uh, from left to right. We have the propeller uh, that's uh, going to be threaded into place on this uh, stainless steel rod uh, serving as the propeller shaft. Uh, on the other end, we have a universal joint. This I actually uh, uh, salvaged from a RC rock crawler. And uh, what's not neat about these things is that uh, they're actually extendable. Right? You can actually uh, set them to whatever length that you, that you want. And as you guessed it, you know, one end is connected to the propeller shaft, whereas the other end is connected to the uh, gearbox outputs uh, on the um, end cap of the WTC. In the middle here, I have a little wheel collar that I fabricated from a spare uh, universal joint part. It's in brass, very, very sturdy. Uh, and this is going to be uh, connect, secured to the propeller shaft with a little set screw that you see on top there. And in, in between these two, Parts, you've got some washers that are going to be sandwiching that uh, bushing 
that I showed you inside the hull. And really did this whole thing prevents the propeller shaft, shaft from uh, any um, unintended uh, lateral movement. Uh, so it's going to be uh, very, very nicely secured in place. So next, next up, uh, we're gonna connect this whole dry line up on both sides, sides of the boat and show you uh, the whole thing in action. All right, guys, moment of truth. I've got my transmitter turned on and the main battery is connected uh, inside the WTC. So with the drive line all connected, we'll just give her a little throttle forward. Plenty of torque and power with those uh, little motors. So I'm really curious about how uh, fast this little U-boat will go in the water. So hopefully not too fast. We've got to keep her uh, a bit more uh, scale-like uh, when she's sailing uh, on the water there. Uh, if I give it a little more throttle, you can see the, uh, the black universal drive shafts rotating there uh, connected to the uh, propeller shaft. But uh, really, really happy with the power that I am getting. Now keep in mind, I don't currently have those bushings uh, greased yet. So uh, I don't want to run uh, these motors um, in, uh, for too long. I'm just only doing little short bursts. And uh, I, I am recording this in my basement workshop. So uh, keep in mind that the, the sound does echo quite a bit. So in real life, the, the, the noise isn't actually that bad. But I do love uh, how those engines sound. Yeah, I can, uh, can listen, listen to that all day. So uh, with the uh, propulsion system working, uh, no matter what RC project I do, uh, having the driveline uh, be operational and the motors turning, everything's connected, uh, really does make me feel like uh, a, a huge milestone in the project since uh, the uh, model is essentially now alive. So, uh, and especially for uh, this U-boat, uh, since her completion and uh, since the completion of the hull uh, in 2017, I've been waiting for a long time to get to this point. So uh, personally, I'm very, very happy uh, with uh, how uh, this project is turning out. And with that being said, I do want to talk about where we are in this project and where I plan to go forward in the next steps. So as she sits right now, uh, my U-boat is essentially ready to be trimmed. What this means is that uh, uh, she can be dropped into the water, uh, in this case, either in a test tank or most likely uh, my bathtub, so that the correct amount of ballast and the flotation foam can be inserted into the hull to achieve the right surfaced and uh, submerged trim. Uh, keep in mind that I am using a vented ballast tank. Uh, this means that uh, at the submerged trim, uh, a portion of the conning tower or the periscope needs to be exposed above the waves uh, so that the air can be drawn into the ballast tank to surface the boat. Of course, during the trimming process, the watertight cylinder will also be checked for any potential, uh, potential leaks that needs to be fixed before the maiden voyage. And speaking of the maiden voyage, uh, at the time of recording uh, this video, it is currently uh, winter here in Canada and uh, almost the end of December 2021. And this means that uh, my model boating pond is most likely drained or uh, frozen over. So uh, the maiden voyage will need to wait until at least uh, late spring or early uh, summer uh, next year, which is quite a few months away. But uh, there are some just additional works that needs to be done uh, on the boat. Uh, in particular, uh, a new paint job needs to be applied so that I can do the weather, do the weathering uh, properly this time. Uh, concerning the top portion of the hull, I do want to redo the rigging. Uh, right now, I am using a kind of a jewelry uh, wire there. Uh, very, very thin and durable, but not quite scale looking. Uh, for 135th scale. So I do want to redo the rigging uh, on top of the U-boat. I also mentioned that earlier that uh, I want to have a at least one working torpedo uh, in this sub. 
but I feel that uh, before you know, uh, in inserting a uh, torpedo system into the hull, uh, I do want to make sure that the boat is performing uh, at her best, uh, both over and under the waves. So uh, you know, there's no point to have a uh, torpedo system if the boat isn't working correctly, uh, surfaced or submerged, right? So the performance definitely needs to be dialed in and uh, perfect uh, before. Uh, I can proceed with that part of the build. But I do want to have uh, the uh, torpedo uh, build process as maybe another build series over the next few months. Uh, so uh, along with in other RC submarine topics uh, that I wanted to cover um, since I started this channel. So as usual, uh, thank you very much for tuning in over these past few months. I'm having a lot of fun uh, working on this project as you can tell uh, and uh, remember to give us a like and a subscribe that really helps me uh, grow the channel so, um, so look forward to many many more videos to come uh, in the next few months uh, in the wonderful world of RC submarines with that being said I do want to wish you guys a very uh, happy new year uh, hopefully 2022 will bring us many more adventures uh, in this hobby uh, of us RC submarines. So uh, stay safe and uh, take care everyone. We'll see you next time.